I have uh, James Coyle on from Event One. Uh, uh, Event One is the uh, creators of the uh, software Sage Office Connector. Uh, and he's going to give us an overview of uh, the uh, solution, and he'll uh, be able to answer questions. Um, James, do you prefer to answer questions as we go, or would you like to have them typed in and answered? Uh, how would you prefer to handle that? It is easy for me either way. Um, it just whether depending on the size, if there's noise. There's only two other people on the line, so I'm going to yeah. mute everybody. And if you have a okay. question, just feel free to ask. Okay? So it's all yours. Awesome. I was I was delaying so that my uh, coffee got got uh, ready, you know? <laughs> Earlier for me than for you folks. So thank you so much uh, for this opportunity to present the software, George, and to United Solutions, uh, George and Craig. Um, George, are you recording this, or do you want me... Is there a way that I can record this for you? Oh, I've, I'm recording it. I have it recorded. Everyone okay. will get a copy of the presentation when, when complete. Wonderful. Great. Well, as, as George said, if you have questions, you can either ask if you're off mute um, or you can um, chat them uh, to uh, either panelist or George or however it shows up over there so that we see it. Uh, my name is James Coyle, and I'm with Event One Software, and I'm presenting this for United Solutions. This is going to be a comprehensive presentation of uh, Office Connector. So we're going to try to cover each of the different elements, the capabilities, um, including how you would use it to create your own content from on the fly, from the, you know yourself, which is what our technology was originally created for, um, or you know the ability to refresh reports and what have you. So we'll discuss license types, what, what software you need for different types of functions. We'll discuss the reports that are on the launch pad. We'll cover some of those. Um, we'll do this in a way that as if you haven't already acquired the technology, um, you can get an evaluation of the live software, so an evaluation time period of the live software. And you'll know when you're opening up a template generating a workbook how to use that. That's our, one of our objectives here, is that you'll be able to be successful and to know where you'll direct questions so that you gain a better understanding. Like any, any technology, you know, you're going to learn this in, in um, you know, there's a, there's a learning curve, but it will be fast if you're familiar with Excel, being that this is an Excel-based uh, type of technology. Um, be, because it's a comprehensive presentation, I want to talk about what it is and, and, and what the technology is and what it isn't. And I'll start with what it isn't. So some people, when they think about working with Excel, the concept is that they type information into Excel or they have a report, they already have it maybe in Sage, in Report Designer or Crystal or an inquiry, and they want to get that information into Excel and work with it. And that's called pushing information. And that's not what this software does. It's the exact opposite. When you push information, you are stuck with having to rearrange that information so that you can utilize it. And you must invest that time every single time you want to work with information. The opposite is where the data is you know, in Excel. The, the, the report, the layout of the information is something you control in Excel once. And so when you refresh your information, all of the presentation, everything is preserved. So that means that one piece of information can get tied to another, like charts and graphs, and all of that will refresh with just a click. So it, the whole idea here is time savings, and to do so in a way that is familiar to you, to leverage what you already know. So that's why we say uh, that you know, the technology is easier, easy to learn, to set up, to utilize. It was designed in a way that if you're not a programmer, if you're not really experienced with uh, writing reports where you have to know all the tables of information right off the bat before you even begin a design, you know, when you have to approach that, you, a lot of people are not successful because that's not what they do for a living. You do your job for a living. 
This is different. This is going to be a very organic process that you, you can grab information that you know and, and evolve a report to have exactly what you want. So it will be very forgiving uh, to you. And all of that, what I just described, is the query capability. So Office Connector product suite uh, is our three product families, query, write, and import, that can all work together. Now, each one could work independently. If you have information in Excel and you simply want to import it into uh, Sage, then you could just acquire just the import, and it, and it will work. Um, Working together with query, though, you can do a lot more. So the products work most effectively when they're working together, but they can be working independently. So query, I'm sitting in Excel and I'm connecting my Excel to my data in Sage and refreshing, or putting information in Excel like formulas and using it. Write would go the, diff the opposite direction. So if I, now, the benefit of the writing would be very similar to what you might do if you're uh, going through setup in accounts payable or job cost or payroll or wherever you happen to be. When you're in setup and you're maintaining information, you know, if you've done this, that the information spread across perhaps quite a few different screens, and you have to use the use of the application in order to, to get in there and maintain uh, insurance expiration, whatever it happens to be. With the right capability in Excel, you can present to somebody who's maintaining information only what you want them to see, only what they need to see, and they can put things in and it doesn't use the use of any of the applications and then it writes directly into the system so you don't you're not handling information multiple times. So it's a very powerful product, the right? And then import is going to allow you to take data that would be transactional in nature, like estimates or estimate revisions, budget shifts, change orders could be invoices, perhaps you have credit card detail, you want to put in jobs, expense accounts, properties, whatever, and import those as invoices, you know, payroll time, those are the kinds of things that you can do with import, um, distributed cost forecasting, you know, if you're a construction company. So these products can all work together, in a family, query, write, and import. And in the query area, there is a sub product it's a site license that extends the capability of query it's called financials we're going to touch on that and what it will allow you to do is you know, the query capability allows you to pull data from any table in sage and present it you know where, where you want any of the tables that are read by the uh, ODBC open database connectivity driver for sage the um, well financial information when you work with it Oftentimes, what you want to do is look at information comparatively, perhaps today or a year ago or five years ago or 10 years ago, or you want to do consolidations and things, and the data is not stored that way in SAGE. Manipulation of the information must occur. The financials will do all of that for you effortlessly. It's a very, very powerful product, so we'll touch on that as well. Um, I've got two slides that talk about the license types here and then later. The, again, I mentioned there are three product families, and, and the query here, it's sold by designer or standard license. These are concurrent uses. Write is the same way. Import our site licenses. And financials is an extension of your query licenses. So it's a site license that extends it. So you buy just the number of concurrent licenses that you have people who want, to, who want that capability to utilize it at exactly the same time. And the sale, your salespeople can help you um, make those decisions. Um, so you get just the licenses you need. So we'll touch on this again here in a bit. So the, this PowerPoint is going to be provided to you. You can, you know, and for notes and whatever, follow up later. The and so the query designer. This is the first technology that we created. So this is a Sage product now, but originally we created this technology and. The idea was that you would be able to evolve a report the way you want and refresh it once you did it. That was the only license once upon a time. Uh, now, there, in addition to the ability to design and refresh with a query designer license, you have uh, actually um, a standard license. So there's query designer, then there's also a standard license capability to allow you to refresh reports that we create or somebody else creates, a consultant might have created. 
again, here are the financials, and I've got a lot more content on that. So just uh, these are some of the capabilities of the financials. Let's get into the technology and have a look, and then we'll come back to you at the PowerPoint, and we'll cover some more information here. Um, George, everything coming through on your side, the slides? And yep, everything looks great. Okay, very good. Well, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to launch Office Connector, the launch pad. This is on my desktop. When you install Sage, Office Connector is installed. It's a part of Sage. And everyone gets the starter. So you get access to the starter templates as part of your Sage care. And uh, these will work. If you go to the Welcome tab, there's a lot of information here on products and documentation and training and everything you you know really want. And then here, this first section will go over the starter templates, uh, a little tutorials on how to use them. Um, you can't customize them. They just are what they are. They're useful. Um, but they'll also then, if you scroll down, cover query, write, and import. There's a lot of detail right here. So you all have that. It's either here on your on your desktop or if you go to your programs here and you go down and find Sage under all programs, Office Central will be there, the launch pad. And we're going to start with these reports. So as the uh, communication sent out to you to, for this session to, uh, talked about, there are a number of reports that come standard with Office Connector. You can utilize these. With a query standard license or query designer, you can refresh any of these reports and you use them. So I'm going to open a couple of them just to show you. I'm going to start with the first template we ever created. This is a, it, it's a controller's quick view of the status of all your, your uh, applications. So it's, it's, a, um, it's like a dashboard. And it can be customized. You can extend on this. So when I open up uh, from the launch pad, it's a template. So when I open it up, it becomes a workbook. And in the process, I'm picking my Sage folder. And then I'm going to log into Sage. I'm going to give my login and password. Now, with your Sage security, you can t lock down the access that people have to your Sage data from outside of Sage. So inside, you can lock down menu access and, and records and things like that. Outside, you go to the ODBC security, and you can lock down who can see which tables from outside. And though when I log in, I'm only going to be able to see the information that the security allows me to see. Every template that you'll generate a workbook for and use this workbook now will have an information page uh, that we create. And that page, this page here will describe to you their purpose. It'll look, it'll give you, uh, you how to use the example here um, and some more information about the design and what it utilizes and things like this. I've got sample values that for this sample database. But as you see here, there, you know, we adopt certain best practices. This technology has been out since 2001, so we have thousands and thousands of customers and tens of thousands of, of users using this and have used it for a long time. So there's a lot of best practices that will eliminate objections people have to using Excel, turning Excel into the most powerful uh, fi you know, financial analysis tool in your arsenal and you already know it and have it most likely. So you know, we'll, so we'll have things like putting the date that the data is current as of, the location it's based on. But here, notice it's pulling information from different applications and in a way that can help somebody spot anomalies and maybe investigate them quickly. Um, so these are, you know, in red, they could be things that you know that shouldn't exist. There shouldn't be unposted entries. You shouldn't be behind several periods in one application versus another. So it will tell you. Now, this can be customized. So let's say I wanted to know what the detail was. There's 22 unposted entries in job costs. What are those? So I'm going to come here, and I'm going to insert a page, and I'm going to use Office Connector Designer now, OK? And I'm going to connect this area of Excel to the data I want to look into. So I'm going to go to Add-ins. That's where Office Connector lives. And here's your toolbar. So you've got over here on the left-hand side is your 
Office Center query capabilities. Over here, the last two, or the second and third to the end, are your write capabilities, the write designer and the write standard capability. And then up here is your importing capability. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here, which is a query. A query is connect, connects an area of Excel to dynamic information uh, outside, you know, in this case in the Sage database. So I'm going to click this, and I'm, I already picked the database I'm going to connect to. So when I click the, the, the wizard, it's showing me a list of all my tables. I can pull from any of these. I can even preview to determine if, if the table is what I want. I'm going to type in JCT, JC space T. Now I'm in the job cost ones, and I want to go to the new transactions. So I'm going to hit next. And now these are the columns of information that you can display from this table. Um, and so these are the same ones you'd see in report design or, or inquiry. I can just hit the space bar and select things. I can, I can click them, you know, with my mouse. Uh, I can skip over ones that I may not want. You know, you'd probably grab things in this situation that would help you determine what is it that's preventing it from updating. And, you know, most likely the deal is that it's a period, an accounting period beyond um, one period in the future, job cost. That's how most people have their job costs set up monthly. And uh, if you try to post cost two months down the road, you it would reject. But if I hit here next, you know, I pick the columns, I can apply a condition. I'm not going to in this case. I'll do another example for that. I want all the transactions. And then I can call it what it is. This is a query of, of JC transactions. We, we're naming the report for you, but you can rename it right here. So if you put a condition or you just want to call it like new or unposted, you know, you can do that right here and then hit finish. And now I have this report. This is now a dynamic report. Anytime I want, I can refresh it. You can set this so that when you open the workbook, it, all the queries and formulas refresh immediately, or you could set it so that it doesn't open immediately, that you refresh and then you could use it, the information. It just depends on the purpose of, of your report. Um, and by the way, that kind of capability is, is handling your preferences. Right here under Edit Preferences, I can go in and tell quite a few different capabilities. So there's things in the workbook about saving data or refreshing immediately. There's some advanced capabilities here. There's help, and that will explain a lot about this. So now I've got this query. Um, if I wanted to refresh it manually, I could just right-click the query anywhere and hit uh, Refresh. I can also come up here and hit this lightning bolt, and it will refresh all the queries and functions in my workbook. So this is the detail. Now this is now the, the sheet. I'm going to name the sheet. You know, rename it. I'll say unposted. You know, entries. Maybe I'm in the stack job cost unposted, AP unposted. You know, one above the other. Um, but I want to connect this area, this thing, to that right there. So that from now on, if I want to see the unposted, I can get to it really fast. How do I do that? It's Excel. You right click, and here are your Excel options. There's a hyperlink, and you can jump to a place, a web page or another file. You can link uh, something to a like a job site photo, progress photo, or safety image. But in this case, I want to go to a place in the document. Notice here, I named it. It's unposted entries is the sheet. And that's the name of the report. See how I customize that? So I hit OK. And now from now on, see there's an underline. If I just click that, it jumps right in there. So that's not drill down, which we, it kind of is a little bit like drill down, but we have a much more powerful capability that George alluded to. But this is an example of using a report um, that's on there and maybe customizing it. It's going to be a very common thing that folks do. Now there's another capability I want to point out to you, and I'm pointing out some things that I know that would be pretty instantly useful. This capability allows you to search the Sage database. If you're doing some kind of an audit or whatever, ask yourself the question, if you, if you, had, if you were out of proof or someone was looking for certain entries for a certain vendor or whatever, how would you go about 
doing that. I mean, what if I wanted, I knew I was, I was off by $150, but I don't know exactly what month it was or all the areas it may have impacted. How would I go about looking for that? That there would be a lot of reports you'd have to run. Or you just use this template. So I come in here, I pick my folder, log in. Now the reason it's asking me to log in again is I closed my workbook, which released my concurrency. If I didn't close that a workbook, then I can hold my concurrency open and I won't get asked to log in. I just keep using it. Okay. So in this case, I've got again some sample values here. On on the uh, so you can look more about this. Remember, I told you get evaluation. If you already have Office Country, you can use it. But right here, I can select which applications I want to search in. I can put parameters like accounting dates. You know, I know water hookup is somewhere in the description. Could be at the beginning, middle, end. I don't know. Uh, I could even put E L E C for you know it has the word electric or something like that somewhere in there. There's also special search parameters for general ledger, job cost, you know, accounts payable, things that are pertain to those that I can set. But whatever I set, I tell it which folder I want to search, and I click search. And now it's going off, and it's looking in all my tables, and I just go and get some coffee, wipe, do reports. See, work smart. Don't work hard. Work smart. Because if you print a bunch of reports, you're probably going to miss it anyway. I mean, we're all human. But this found four transactions and job or four four matches in job costs and it could be could be who knows where it is. You know, so if I click this, there, these four entries have that water hookup in there. You know, they meet the parameters for job cost. And if I came back here, clicking here, it found them in account uh, AP. So very useful. And you can extend this capability. But what what we want you to do is think about what it is that we did to create this, because you may want to utilize the same approach in other reports. That's what this software was created, is that you could create any of the reports you wanted based on your, uh, however you want, your capabilities of, of building something that you want. So there's all sorts of content here. Um, I want to go into, I'll, I'll show you kind of more an advanced one like this. This is kind of a higher up there. So there's all sorts of cash flow analysis reporting we've done. You know, we have our professional services have done that. Consultants out there know Office Center have done them. There's just lots and lots. This is a job uh, cost-based one. If I come in here, I can put in a specific date, and I'm going to use sample data, 5 uh, 31 2015. And as of that date, I want to look in this folder and Again, it, I closing my temp, uh, my uh, workbook, so it's asking me to log in again. And uh, and now I've got not only do I have the table of information, but I have a, a chart and a graph tied to this information. So this is right when they got off this connector, everything's turning around. So it's a very positive experience. I'm trying to. That's supposed to be funny. Okay. Um, now notice here. This this is the, the information page will tell you what how the template's working or you could email us and ask questions. Basically we're looking at cash in and cash out and we're organizing it by job. So there could be quite a lot going on to present this information. But let's say you you see something anomalous. There's a lot of anomalous stuff here, sample data. And I want to know more about that right there. Okay? Well what we've done is we've done drill down. So we've pre-created queries. There's no parameters assigned yet. You know, but we pre-created them and we created a drill down function. So if I click on this cell, notice it starts with OC drill down. And if I go here to this financial, because it, it's an Excel function, Office Center's Excel, it has various different parameters. And there are even movies, multimedia movies, like there's a tutorial out here on drilling down. And there's a lot more content that we have, even on our YouTube channel or what have you, to help you learn how to do this. But the idea is that when I click this, I want to pass parameters to another query. So if I double click this here, it's passing parameters to this query right here, and it's refreshing. So there you go. That's You'd have more information if this was your database. But now I want to know more about that. This is a summary of the transactions. 
I want to know the detail. So I've got another drill down, and it passes it here. Now, the beauty of drill down is, because, is, is that it's the opposite of a pivot table, if you're familiar with a pivot table. A pivot table is a nice thing. Lots of people use it. If you query data and then you highlight it all and you, and you create a pivot table from it, you can summarize the results and have the columns and rows be what you want. And then if you click on you know, an amount, it will drill in and show you the detail. The, the problem with the, uh, pivot tables is they're slow, and you have to pull all the data out of your database that you ever want to work with before you start presenting the data. That is ridiculous when it comes to financial information. There could be years and years millions of transactions, it's not practical. This is much superior. We're summarizing the data and then drilling into it when we need to. So it's fast, fast, fast. So example of a, of a more sophisticated report, this one using drill down capability. Okay, so now I want to talk quickly about the writing capability. So we, the, the, we know that if we went into job costs or accounts payable, or something, we could edit, say, information on there. Let's say we want to change a bunch of the GL accounts that categories use, or there's a lot of payroll-related information that I want to maintain from human resource information, pays, whatever, and it's spread all over the place. Well, that's maybe not the most efficient way to work with it. Wouldn't it be much more efficient to lay out just the information you want to work with change it and click a button and boom, it puts it in the system and it doesn't use the use of payroll. You work effectively. And there are people who use this, you know, like I have people who do uh, home builders who do closing statements, you know, so when they, when they go through a closing, they need to update a few fields, they are creating entries, you know, all of this happening with just a template that streamlines an entire process. Or maybe setting up or closing a contract it might affect contracts and job costs why manually go to a bunch of screens when you can just streamline it that's the concept of right now in a simple presentation of right a very useful presentation could be budgeting so lots of people well you should probably create budgets right <laughs> that's what my uh, ex-wife used to tell me all the time right so uh, anyway <laughs> and a good idea in business too and, uh, and so what we have here is if I take this information I posted over here, um, you know, something messed up about that template. Hang on a second here. Like so, okay, there we go. It was just kind of delayed or something. This town name had some issues with my, uh, uh, this is a virtual machine. Uh, and they were updating uh, our different machines here, and I think that they kind of messed up my some of, some of my things here. Um, but uh, I, I'm sure this is going to work. The idea is that what we're going to see here is a presentation of our accounts that are in General Ledger. So if you've ever done budgets in General Ledger, there's a place to go to enter budgets, and you can identify which accounts can have budgets, and you manually enter them. Well, a lot of people work on their budgets in General Ledger and then they have to take that information and manually enter it. This template allows you to work in Excel and click a button and it writes it in the general ledger for you. Um, let me see here. Something's messed up with Excel. Let me just. Beg your pardon, George, sorry. Hey, I was just going to say, while you're, doing that, while, you're, while you're doing that, uh, does anyone have any questions at this point that we can answer, or is there something you're looking for that we would want to cover um, at this point? Okay. They get to see that even... Oh, Hold on, go ahead. go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I said I don't have any questions. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right, great. So, so okay. Even, uh, even even people who have uh, who are programmers or whatever designers can have issues with their desktops or Excel. You know, Excel being very powerful, it also has has historically some issues. We all know about those, and so we close our Excel periodically and and uh, then reopen it. Okay, so in this one, what I want to do is 
pull the account that I want to do budgeting on into Excel. And then I want to put my budgets in here. And there's lots of strategies to do that. There's a recorded presentation I did for stage at year end where I use some if functions or whatever I've seen that, that can tie these cells to other sheets. You know, as a matter of fact, I think I even have one of those things open. Let me just find that here. Geo financials. I think this is it right here. So it's kind of like I've, I've seen how people use it, uh, and I, I wanted to demonstrate some of this technique, some of the strategies. The idea is if I get these data, this data into these cells, there are right, obviously the right functions that are tied to it. So if I go to add-ins, you know, if I click this button right here, which will write, send the data to, to general ledger, I click it and it sends it in. I don't have to manually type it. That means I don't, I don't produce errors. If you manually type, you have to run a report, make sure you did it. So then the key is, how do I get this information filled out? Well, sometimes people will put formulas off of here that, that look up existing budgets or existing uh, uh, accounts and, or averages or whatever, and then copy and paste them into here. Other people might have you know, a whole bunch of jobs and they go through kind of an escalation to come up with maybe an income projection. And these, the totals can have defined names. So if there's five jobs, 10, whatever, this is sustainable. If, this, if there's 20 rows, the total may be down here, but it'll still have these names. So this is where you define names. Well, in, over here, if I tie this to the defined name, it will just constantly be updated. I don't have to maintain this sheet. Um, this is an example of using some if. So notice I've got these different accounts and rows. Well, over here, I might have one account that occupies four different rows, another has one row. Here are my months that I'm doing budgeting. The sum if function will sum, you know, all the all all the things for this column. If the account number here matches, say, the account number here, and again, it's no low maintenance. You set it up once, you do your budgeting. This gets done. You click a button. You can do a lot of work fast. Um, if your budgets are written in, then you can utilize that for um, your financials. So just to quickly show you uh, something from nothing on writing, um, how easy it can be, I'll do a simple example for you. Let's say I wanted to maintain um, some insurance expiration on some commitments. So let's say uh, I'm going to come here, and I'm going to do a query, and I come in here. If you're a contractor, this would resonate with you. Um, perhaps. So I, I want to look at information that's in there. So on the job cost commitment table, right, there's all sorts, there's commitment, there's commitment items, there's custom fields, whatever it is the table that you want, you pick it, and you're picking display fields, right? So I've got the commitment, uh, maybe I want to know the type and the vendor, and then I, you know, maybe I want to know something, you know, whether it's released to accounting, committed to job costs, but mostly I want to look at, you know, like say the workers' comp. Is it required? What's the company? What's the policy? The effective date, the expiration, the limit. You know, these kinds of things are things I would have to go into job cost, go into a commitment, and navigate right here and maintain it. it that's, and then get out and go back in. It's tedious. Well, I work that way. So I hit next. And I'm just going to grab all the data. You would put a condition on here. But this is a 1 and a 0. That's like a checkbox. So a checkbox field, a 1 is it's checked, a 1 or a negative 1, actually. And a 0 means it's not checked. So if I write a 1 into a field, like workers' comp is required, if I wrote a 1, you wouldn't do that with a PO, right, down here with a subcontract. If I wrote a 1 into that field, then it would change the, it to being required inside of Sage. You know, if I want to write the company, I would write it in here. So these are the values that are in Sage. Now, the way I've seen people work, if they were going to do something like this, they would lock the data that's coming from Sage, right? That's the, and then they would add another column either to the next to it, you know, uh, or off to the right. And this is going to be 
you know, say update uh, workers comp company. And in this column, the way we do it typically is we'll change the um, the background color to something that we know is, you know, draws the eye, that this is something we want people to maintain. And we'll also format the cell so that it's unlocked. So that way if I give it to a clerical person, they can't change these values, but they can put a value here. So let's say I come in here and I want to put, um, you know, a company, workers' comp company, that says workers' insurance. So it's like, um, you know, I'll say ABC insurance. That's really what it is. I want to put that here, but I don't want to go into Sage to do it. How would I do that? Well, the way you do it is if you have the designer, I, we would say put on this column the background color of something like gray because this would be a hidden column. Uh, let's say that color. Okay. And anyway, what you want right here is if I go to the designer, I can tell it I want to write to the commitment. I want to modify. So it's like a job, the key to the table is modifiable with ODBC. So you can create new jobs. You can create new vendors, new employees. Um, this a commitment can only be created if you import it or if you manually enter it. But columns on it can be modified. So I want to modify the commitment. Now it says which commitment. Well, for, they're all in different rows. So, but I'm in row 48. I would probably put it on row one, you know, up there. But I'm going to say in dollar sign uh, B48 is the commitment number, right? That's the commitment I want to maintain. I'm telling the uh, program that. And uh, now it says, what do you want to replace? So in this case, it's the workers comp company right there. I want to replace that. So I hit next, and it says, okay, what's, what column has the data you want to write? And I'll say it's in J48. Uh, That's the new value, right? And now I have a write function. Now, if I were you, I would teach you, you know, to say something like if, you know, uh, dollar sign, or yeah, dollar sign J48 is not equal to blank, then write. You don't want to wipe out the company, you know, otherwise, you know, something like that. So now you've created a formula that if you copy it down, you know, it's not going to write a bunch of blanks over there and wipe out some names here. But now, so how does it work? That This would be in the hidden column, by the way. They're going to go in, they're going to put values in. Maybe they don't, you can control who can write into Sage. Uh, definitely, you know, but once you see review the information, all you have to do is click this button. It'll find all the formulas instantly, and then you just hit write, and it writes it in. There's does did I go into job cost? Nope, it's done. That's how easy it is. Writing this is the most powerful of all of our products. It's also the least understood. Um, but uh, if I hit refresh, then you're going to see um, ABC Insurance. See now that's what's in there. That's how easy it is. Um, so that's writing. There's a lot that you can do for writing. Um, importing, you can't write estimates, change orders, you know, whatever. You have to import those details. If it's something you would manually enter uh, under, like, enter transactions or enter invoices, then you have to import it. So these are import example templates. and. I can use it. Now I'm going to come in and use this cost to complete example because it kind of kills two birds with one stone. It talks a little bit about cost forecasting, which we, we've been doing this kind of stuff since the mid-90s. Um, uh, you know, event software, you know, quality user educators is our consulting company. But the way this template works is I would go in and I would put in a job. I would refresh the workbook. Put in a job, refresh the workbook and save it, and probably I'd have a forecast folder on my network, and below it I'd have project managers, and I'd put their their workbooks in there. And I would refresh it, and maybe I'd protect it so that they can't change these columns. I want them to put in a cost to complete, a cost at completion, a percent complete, units to go if I self-perform. There's a lot of different things you can do. Um, we have a, a new template. That is way powerful, and every road could be a different forecasting method if you want. But the beauty of this is, let's say right here, the job day cost, 
on this one is 100,000. My estimate was 99, but I know that I've got to spend another $5,400. And so it's co coming across here telling me, and then I would require an operational person to say why. You know, the reason for overage is, you know, whatever it is. Well, Office Hunter has a lot of powerful capabilities. We don't have the time to go into all of them. But one of them is normally if you type a value into a row in Excel, if you refresh this, if there are new cost codes, all this data will push down. Well, if you type in values next to data, it normally stays in the row you type it in Excel, which would make this useless. So we invented a, a formula called uh, retain, OC retain, and it will keep values you plug in next to what they belong to. So it's sustainable. You definitely need that for this kind of thing. But you get this done, right, you know, you want to put it into SAGE. This can back up your work in progress reporting. So to get it into SAGE, you just go, uh, well, this particular one, it, it could be written. There is a template that writes, but it's better if it creates a transaction, a miscellaneous worksheet transaction. Over here on the admin page, there's a button here that says create import file. And if you click this button, then it will it will create an import file, it'll give it a name, and it'll launch Office Connector import miscellaneous worksheets. So you may, if you're familiar with Sage, you may say, well, hold on a second here. You can, under import on tools, you can import estimates and, you know, AP invoices and accounts table that you can't import miscellaneous worksheets. It's not there. You can with this technology, and you can use it for financial forecasting. Like by the job, you could forecast out two years. There's so many ways to use it. But anyway, I just hit OK, it, and then uh, I've obviously done this example, and it creates the transactions for me. And I would have a better, I mean, I would have more of a work process. Each time I refreshed, I would make a copy like June, July, August, so I had all my historical forecasts in a workbook. But these back up the, I've got a, a, a new version here that I'm working through, but normally this report tells you what happened if there's something that's created. Um, but it's telling you there's certain, a bunch of lines that were skipped because they, um, I haven't suppressed those messages. The reason those lines were uh, skipped is because I'm only, putting one row in, most of these are blank. So it just it's telling you to just skip those. But the point is that it's creating those entries that I would normally have to go into miscellaneous worksheets and it could be tedious to navigate all those uh, fields. This does it automatically. Lots of useful ways for importing capability. We have a powerful one. George, I hope I, I'm gonna try to rush and show this real quick. There is a uh, where is it? Templates for sale. But, uh, we have substantially complete templates having done this for so long. Um, we've written lots of reports for folks who go through a scope, a discovery, and then create the solution. But some things are uh, resonate with lots of people. And uh, rather than maybe the first time we ever did something it costing a lot of money, you know, to that to somebody, if we know a lot of people are going to use something, we may build something and be able to offer it for a fraction. So an example would be um, LCP, that's a certified payroll. If you have to report, not on paper, but to certified payroll, there's an, a company called LCP and we have a template that will upload to it. Um, otherwise it can be very tedious to type things into their um, portal. Um, here, there's, a, there's just lots of examples, but this credit card import, it's one of the most popular um, because what it would allow you to do um, let's see here, probably I think it's development, um, this one. The, uh, and there's a recorded presentation on this that's more detailed. I just want to kind of introduce the higher notes. At conferences, this is a really hot topic. People want to, I wonder, when I was a consultant, I had no idea if people spent any time doing this. <laughs> what a fool I was. Uh, but anyway, the way this works is, you know, you, a credit card company can save data in a CSV file. Well, that's great, it's got various columns. But what I need to do is get it in here and start allocating it. Sometimes I want to import it all to the credit card as the vendor. Other times I want to pay my credit card and then import all the detail to the actual vendor that I paid with a credit card to get that into the system. So 
there's a way you can just put the vendor here. You can do splits, you can allocate it. This one has validation, so it'll give you a list of jobs. It'll make sure you enter correct cost code. When you get this all dialed in correctly, you just click one button right here, create import file, and it will import it as invoices into accounts payable. Ginormous time saver, this template there. And it will show you here what's required. You need to get Office Center import miscellaneous worksheets uh, from, from United Solutions, and then uh, this template, and we can help set it up for you. So um, there's a price, and we can cover that. You know, If you have questions you're interested, just mention that in the follow-up. Um, the last thing I want to show is financials. The, there are a number of financials reports here. You can run these. There's a multi-folder one that will consolidate data from multiple folders. There is a, I'm just going to go into this one. There, the P&L by month is a really good one. I've had people take that and extend it out to include five years of months, and Excel is going to have a lot of columns. But this one is cool. Uh, the reason I want to show just this one real quick is, um, is you can, with this product, if you, if you had a calendar year end, and it's December or it's January or February, and you don't have your closing entries, but you want to run a financial for January or February. You cannot do that. With financials, you can't run off of a future period. But Office Connector financials can run off of any period. So when you come in here, I can, I can say, you know, I want to consolidate all my prefixes. And if it was 20, you know, December 2017, I could put fiscal year 2018 um, and then month one. Now, if the, the key is what your year ending is. If some prefixes could have a year ending of October, others December, you know, and to try to do a consolidation is very difficult normally. With this technology, it's easy. If you want to run something for January, calendar January, just put 101, and this product will figure out what that means to every prefix no matter what period they're in, no matter what their year end is. It does an enormous amount. It's for the amount it sells for, it's, I can't believe everybody just doesn't have it, but um, the, the um, sorry here, this particular template may not be, uh, you can, a one through 12 is, is fiscal one through 12, 101 through 112 is, is calendar month 12, but whatever you do it for, um, I've got a sample data, so I'm gonna put this in here. When I refresh the data, it's going to go in and figure out, you know, for all your prefixes, what, you know, what the values are for each, each of the columns. You can choose whether amounts are activity, balances, debit activity, budgets. You can put in anything, you know, really. Um, and this one will have a trial balance, a balance sheet, and P&L. And if you want to see what makes up a number, just click it, and it, remember the drill down? It's right there. So there's a lot of templates out there. Um, all the training to learn how to build your own financials, it's all recorded on free on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. So you don't even have to pay for that training. Um, it's very powerful. Um, I think I'm running out of time, so, um, but I want to kind of give you a quick example of how easy the, it is to actually use it. So if you're going to build something, so I have this financial skeleton, and if you give me a couple minutes, I will show you how easy it is. Okay, well, first of all, back to the PowerPoint, just so you know, um, there are slides in here. Um, let me just do this here real quick, uh, so I'm current slide. Just hit the high points here. So this is an example of of some of the reports that are in there, you know. So you can do roll back and roll forward. So this talks about it. It's going to be in your PowerPoint, and it gives you an example of, you know, where you would put the fiscal year and what have you. I kind of rushed to add these slides into your thing, George, so <laughs> I may edit my PowerPoint before I distribute it or just distribute the one I did for Tug, and it's pretty, it's very explanatory. Um, it can do consolidations. So I, my prefixes, I can choose them by wild card. It can be a range of prefixes. It, it's very, it, it can do everything that the financials and Sage that comes with Sage can do as far as prefix groups, but it can do a lot more than that. Um, it, 
so there's all sorts of things. Here's some examples of different things I can pass into the formula to get exactly the prefixes, you know, that I want. Um, you can tell it what the, the amounts are. So it could be balance, it could be period activity, all of these types of amounts the formula can return. And it's figuring it out for whatever prefix, whatever base account, whatever fiscal year and, and, and month or period, you know, it is, it will do all of the heavy lifting and you get all of these reports, you know, with it. Um, so just to show you here real quick, let's see here, not that one, sorry, there we go, that's it. So let's say right here, I've got a prefix in this folder, I'm going to say it's got a, a two prefix levels, I got a year and a period. When I change these, I want my amounts to change. I can do it for ranges of base accounts uh, as well. Uh, I'm just going to give you a quick example here. So if I go to add-ins, there's an icon here, which is our function selector. And if you go into that, all of the Office Center functions are listed here, all of the ones that you could use. And it will give you a, a description. You know, If I click on any of these, it tells me kind of what it makes it up. But this right here describes the, the TSGL amount and all of its capabilities here. I'm just going to insert it, you know, and then it starts mapping. It's just Excel, right? If you're used to using Excel, this is just like an Excel function. It is an Excel function. It's just powerful that we wrote. But the prefix, I just click this. I want the prefixes from right there. The base account, you know, I put in dollar sign B9, right? Column B, I'm currently in row 9. I'm going to build one formula and copy it. Uh, fiscal year, I can come up here, period, year, you know, and I hit enter. Now I hit enter, and what, it, what did it return? If I didn't put a value in there, then it returned balance. Now I could edit the formula and come back in here just like that. That's how easy it is to edit the thing. And I've, I put your types over here. Right, I just kind of copied and pasted in there. Uh, so what I want is period activity. That's what I want. And I, I need it for uh, the, um, let's see here. That's not right. OK, um, I want Gold Coast data. That's the property management sample data. It's got a more robust database here. Um, and now I'm going to hit refresh. And then I'm going to copy this thing down. I've got values. See? Now, that's period activity. If, and then you saw it. If I just change it, it changes it. So some people in the column heading will put the amount they want. They'll put the period. They'll put the year. And maybe they'll hide those rows. And if you change them, all the formulas change. So think about how powerful it is. You can even put the data folder in a the data folder is one of the parameters. You could put a one data folder in one column and one in another and pull from multiple ones. It's really powerful. Now, if I copy this over, notice it's still period activity. But if I want balance, I could either get rid of that because that's the default, or I don't recommend you do that. I say, you know, come in here and put in what it is. So every formula is self-explanatory. And then there's the balance. And now I ask you, was that difficult? It's just Excel. But what is it doing? You know, what if my fiscal control was on prefix B, and some prefixes have one calendar year and or one fiscal year, and some have a different one, and I have different controllers running divisions, and they don't close their months at the same time? Will this work? Yes. It does all the math for you. And if you think about that, um, what is it doing? You know, what is it looking at? Um, I'm just going to do, it's not, I'm really not going to do a query. I just want to do this so you can get a sense of, you know, stuff that. I just want to show real quick, George, this, uh, the, the GL account table is one table, okay? It only has two years of information, right? There's not that much. But, the, well, it's a lot, but, but there's another table, the activity history table. Sage added it years ago, and that is what you want to access because it can go back 10 years. And financials, Office of Financials can use that table. So th that's why it can 
you know, run for any of these prefixes and what have you. So you get a sense of the power and flexibility. Again, these are the products in the Office Center product suite. Um, you can get an evaluation, you can get a quote. Here's contact information for George and for Craig and turning it over to you, George. Ah, thank you, James. Uh, do we have any questions? We do have a hand raised. Hold on one second. Uh, uh, let's see, of course I have to be able to read it. Uh, will you send us a cleaned up recording? Most of the second half of Mr. Coyle's presentation has been broken up the audio, making it difficult. Yes, we. I will uh, have this, uh, I'll send out a copy of this recording uh, so that you will be able to see it all. Uh, it wasn't broken up on my end, so I'm not sure where the breakups were happening. So, but... That's the beauty uh, recording, because the recording won't be broken up, even if the... Uh, their connection, there's a lot of storms going on in the U.S. So. Right, yeah, so we'll take care of that immediately. Uh, does anybody else have any other questions at this time? Great. No, will we get the, will we get the recording from an email, George? Yeah, yeah, well, okay. it'll be a link. What I do is I, I take it and I place it on YouTube, and then you'll be able to just uh, click the link and see it. Okay, thank you. All right, Is there anything Good that question. you... I have a question, George. Was there anything that that you expected or hoped to see that you didn't get a glimpse of about what this is capable of? There's just so much it can do. It's hard to cover everything in a short period of time. It does. It shows just how much it can cover. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's, you got to digest it right before you can have yeah, questions. Exactly. Very good. <laughs> awesome. All right. So if anybody uh, in the future needs, uh, I'll send this information out to everybody. Uh, and if you need to uh, get in touch with me, uh, there's the contact information. And also, um, you know, uh, uh, if you'd like, uh, James, I, I don't see the link to, you, to the event one page where they can get more information also. But I, I'll include that in my email to you. Um, and, you know, they have some great uh, videos on there that demonstrate specific <coughs> products. He calls it training. You can call it demonstration. Either way, um, and there's a lot of different things you, that I can do. Huh? You were you and you and Craig are the path to that. <laughs> I know, right? I know. I know. <laughs> You're the way. <laughs> I know. I know. No, I just I, I share all information. Uh, make it easy for everyone to get what they need, and then uh, they'll come back. Perfect. So, uh, in the meantime, James, thank you so much for your help. I appreciate it. And uh, if anybody have any other questions, please feel free to get in touch with us, and uh, we'll get that we'll get that uh, this information out to you as quickly as possible. Okay. And if you have ideas of other presentations of Office Connector, you want to see how you might be able to do one thing or another, and it didn't occur to you, but now maybe it does. Just send those off to George or Craig, and let them know, and we can develop you know content to talk specifically about what you want to accomplish. All right. Thanks All right. very much, Thank you. George. Appreciate the opportunity. You're welcome. All righty. I'll speak to everyone soon. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.